Now that we've covered all three of the different components of the complexity model, we're going to transition away from the slides and the commentary into looking at two real life examples that I've done on some publicly accessible white papers that'll be linked in the course notes. And we're going to walk through how I went and did complexity assessments and how I integrated them with my daily work. This can be a big way to enhance the way you know, you're viewed by your colleagues and it can be a big confidence booster when you're describing a new technology or solution. So stay tuned for the next set. Thank you. Welcome back everyone, Nick Russo here. And this next video, we're gonna look at a original research document I wrote a few years ago about using BGP in a leaf spine data center to optimize the flow of traffic. So dealing with elephant flows and load sharing and other kinds of things like that without using any kind of tunnels or overlays or anything crazy. We wanna see, can we just do this with BGP and IGP? And the answer is yes, I came up with a way to do that. Now, full disclosure, it hasn't been done in production anywhere yet. There are some concerns about looping. It's definitely imperfect, but what I, the purpose of this is not to show you my uh, prowess with BGP. It's to show you how you can do a complexity assessment and make that part of your research, either for yourself or for your job. So before I just jump into complexity, I do need to spend a few minutes and explain how the solution works. Otherwise, I'm just gonna be basically reading you a document you're not gonna understand. So we're gonna just kinda, I'm just gonna scroll through this document rapidly until we get to some of the overview stuff and we'll talk through it briefly. So I don't wanna read you a book because you can just read this on your own. We'll focus on the diagrams and I'll give you a quick narrative. So I'm showing just a picture of a generic leaf spine network. So for those unfamiliar, I have spines in the center here. And specifically, we're talking about a three phase leaf spine network uh, for the entire uh, document here. So don't think about anything larger. And then I have leaves. Leaves is where my hosts connect like servers. Spines are transit only, and there are no lateral links at any tier. So you can see that between R1 and R2, there's no link. Between R4 and R5, there's no link, etc. So if we scroll down some more, we can kind of look at kind of the problem statement, which is shown in this picture, is I have an elephant flow, a really, really high bandwidth flow from a server on the 172 subnet at the top down to a server on the 172 subnet at the bottom. And because networks typically load share on a per flow basis, yes, it's true that R1 could have chosen R4, R5, or R6 for this flow. It does have to pick one, and it generally isn't going to do per packet you know, break that flow up across multiple different links because that could lead to out of order packets. Uh, TCP, of course, can handle that, but not all protocols can. So they tend to stick together. So what can we do about this problem? Well, without detailing the solution too much, I'll show you if we enable BGP on all of our leaves, these BGP servers or BGP traffic engineering servers, as I dubbed them, can inject longer match routes to direct traffic in different ways in the network. So it's I, I would be hesitant to call this an augmented SDN solution because it's not. I certainly haven't done the work to make it that. But conceptually, I can inject routes in R1 to direct that elephant flow a different way. Or maybe I can break that ele flow, elephant flow up with some unequal cost load sharing. So let me show you an example. If I inject a prefix, so again, you might be thinking from a complexity standpoint, you know, that's why you're watching these videos is to learn about complexity, is... What, how does this relate to complexity? Now you can start to see the beginning of that conversation where I am injecting specific prefixes, a longer match, onto a router so that the elephant flow goes a different way. Now maybe this alleviates the congestion or maybe it just moves the problem somewhere else. We don't really know yet because the link between R1 and R4 that we just moved off of, maybe that link was really hot already and the link between R1 and R5 wasn't. So by moving the flow, we, we didn't actually... We didn't create a new problem per se. Maybe this is working just fine. So we can control the elephant flow by adding state to the network. So just think about that. Keep that in the back of your mind because we'll look at the complexity assessment and talk about that a little bit more. We're going to scroll through some of the other stuff here. I'm just going to rapidly make my way through it because there's one diagram that I think illustrates the separation. So this is an even more advanced way of putting even more state in the network to break that elephant flow up. So for example, maybe I want to break it up in a kind of a two to one ratio. So I inject two of the same routes, 
with different uh, DMZ link bandwidth communities or something like that, where R1 can say, okay, I'm going to unequal cost load share between R5 and R6, and that traffic is still going to make it to R8, but I've uh, split up that elephant flow. Now, let me, let me clarify, I'm not splitting up one flow, but there might be a, a couple different elephant flows that have all hashed on the same path, and I can break those up. So I know my verbiage here isn't perfect, so don't jump on me for that. The purpose of this is just to show that we can use BGP to do this. Clearly, we're injecting state into the network at the edge in order to achieve what I'm going to call reduced deoptimization. So this should be seem kind of familiar with what we talked about in the complexity stuff earlier. So now that you understand the basic solution, let me show you what I like to do when I write professional uh, documents. So these are, again, original research. These are my personal documents that are uh, free and open for everyone to use and edit and borrow, whatever. But I do this for work too, and it's a very similar format. So I usually have a big section and I call it complexity assessment. I start off with a description of what this even means. Because a lot of times when people read this, they roll their eyes and they say, oh boy, now we get to hear about Nick Russo's opinion. Well, I try not to make it too opinionated. I try to keep it empirical, fact-based, and objective, which is what this whole course is about. So I briefly summarize where did I get my model. I reference the book that Russ uh, White and Jeff Chancero wrote. So this is the book that, uh, that a lot of these concepts came from and quite frankly where I learned all this stuff. Then there's three subsections, state, optimization, and surface, not surprisingly. I give a brief description of what state is. I'm not going to read it to you. We already know that state is the amount of control plane present and the rate at which state changes in the network. So it's the combination of the quantity of state and the rate of change. That's what we're calling state. Now, I, these, these assessments don't have to be long and complicated and painful. Typically, mine are only two to four pages. And in these original white papers, they're typically very short, just because I didn't want to get too wordy with it. For more complex designs, oftentimes I'll link through diagrams, uh, as I did in the PowerPoint presentation, to better illustrate the point. But you can also keep it very simple and use this as a way to practice and hone your skills. So I'm going to read a couple excerpts that I think are important just to think through. So... The state retained across the fabric scales linearly as nodes are added. So if X is the number of spines and Y is the number of leaves, then if we add leaf, adding a leaf causes X more links. Okay, that makes sense. So for every time we add a link, we're going to add up, or every time we add a, a leaf per se, there's going to be X number of links. The number of spines is the number of uplinks we're going to have for each one. And adding a spine causes Y more links than topology, one per leaf. So this is just kind of a generic way of saying we are increasing the complexity or the increasing the size of the IGP graph. The, when I say IGP graph, I'm talking about IS to IS or OSPF in this case, assuming you're using those routing protocols as the uh, next top reachability for BGP in this design. So this isn't even specific to BGP injected prefixes. That's in the next paragraph. But even if we look at it from the most basic perspective, just from leaf spine without BGP at all, we can almost see the correlation between adding and removing nodes to the fabric with how it affects state. Because each one of those lines is a new link in the database that needs to be maintained. There's new flooding across those links, which affects the speed of state. And you can see how all these things fit together. So it would be fair to say that as you add nodes to the fabric, the state will increase, which means that if you haven't improved optimization and you haven't reduced surface interactions, then overall your complexity has also increased. So you'll want to keep that in mind too. Now, when we talk about BGP injected prefixes, it's a little more difficult to assess because the control plane is reactive. That is to say, when there is congestion, you know, I envisioned a system where this BGP server would just inject prefixes where they needed to go. As I said, I didn't develop the logic for this yet, so it's a little bit pie in the sky. But if we had this reactive control plane that could inject prefixes to redirect flows away from hotspots, at any point in time, it would be hard to determine what the state of the network was but unequivocally, there's no confusion that adding state through BGP injected prefixes is going to overall, I, I should put it this way, when you inject a prefix, it is going to increase state no matter what. And presumably, the result of that is to decrease de-optimization. Or another way, we're going to increase state to increase optimization. We're trying to get a better path. It's just traffic engineering 101. That's generally... Uh, how state works in this network. So I was able to describe most of that in about two or three paragraphs here. Let's look at optimization. So when I wrote this initially, I kept optimization in a positive context just because it was a little bit easier to understand. So I mentioned here that optimization has a positive connotation. It's the target of many designs. 
I'm not going to read this description here because I think we all understand what optimization means within the context of the model. In this particular environment, we're very focused on optimal routing paths. I hope that much is clear based on what we've talked about so far. So that is our optimization metric. I think this one, again, is pretty straightforward. I think I've talked about it before, is as we increase state in the network, optimization is directly to proportional. That means they both increase at the same time. So again, if I were going to use the negative connotation term, the de-optimization, de-optimization would decrease as state increases. They're really saying the same thing. Don't, don't let the wordsmithing get to you. You can consider a network unoptimized within the context of this network if BGP isn't controlling it and it's just regular IGP routing. So you might just consider that unoptimized ECMP, okay, fine. But when the optimization needs to happen, BGP jumps in and performs that optimization and the state goes up. That's a temporary increase because if the congestion goes away, the BGP prefix can be withdrawn and we can fall back to ECMP in our design that is, quote, less optimized but also has reduced state. So really what I'm trying to show, again, is really solidify the interaction between these two components of the model because it just shows that you were able to think about what those trade-offs were and that it was built into your design, and it may even reveal some new things. So let's move on to surface interactions. This one is, you know, I try to talk about both dimensions of it here. We're trying to identify with surface how tightly intertwined different components are two-dimensional attribute that measures breadth and depth. We talked about that in detail. But let's see how we can, you know, apply it to this model. In this particular design, I intentionally kept things shallow. So here I, I use the word minimally deep. I don't know why I chose those words. I should have just said shallow. Would have been easier. I was probably trying to impress someone. Uh, the spines have no surface interaction between protocols since all they run is IGP. Now that may not have been clear from some of the diagrams earlier, but the spines don't run BGP. So that's kind of cool. So I don't need to do that. Only the leaves do. The leaves rely on my server injected prefixes for traffic engineering, which use IGP next hops. So this is really just a basic BGP IGP interaction, just a natural function of route recursion. What I'm saying there is I haven't done anything crazy with BGP or IGP. It's regular IBGP using IGP for its next hop resolution. I don't consider that crazy, and I also don't consider it a terribly deep surface interaction. It's only two components operating in a very straightforward and uh, rated G environment, if you will. We don't have redistribution. We're not doing any other kinds of route leaks or, or complex best path manipulations outside of some load sharing. So there's really not a whole lot of complexity there in terms of depth. Routing on the spines is entirely deterministic, so the routing on the spines doesn't necessarily change. I don't have any issues with, with depth there. Now, in terms of breadth, and I, I may not have uh, spoken about this terribly well in the text here, but in terms of breadth, something that I want to suggest is I am running BGP traffic engineering. These uh, I'm calling it BGP traffic engineering, but I'm running my service for BGP on all the leaves in my network. I would consider that very wide. So even though it's shallow, it's wide, kind of like the segment routing example we had from the PowerPoint uh, part of the course where I only had a couple components, but everywhere, all my, all my leaves are going to be running this. The reason all the leaves need to run it is so that I have control over determining what flows go which way across which spines. And if I only ran it on certain leaves, then I wouldn't be able to engineer where the flows were going. I would only get control over a few, maybe making changes in some, and then hoping that the others... Um, you know, they hash their, their hash algorithms, take their traffic on a different path. So I would consider this to be a wide interaction. Now, in the next video, we're going to look at a, another document I wrote uh, on OSPF over WAN. So this was kind of uh, IGP, BGP data center. The next one's going to be OSPF over WAN for those who work in enterprise. Um, that design actually is in production. It has been for a long time and largely successful. And I did a very similar complexity assessment. So let's take a look at that. If you found this one a little bit confusing, we'll go through it again. And I will see you there. Thank you.